In July 2017, I decided to terminate my membership of the Tibetan Buddhist organization Rigpa. It also meant the end of my 25-year-long relationship with my teacher Shogya Rinpoche, Rigpa's spiritual leader. Increasing rumors and messages concerning sexual, physical and psychological abuse, as well as extravagant lifestyle choices, have damaged my faith in Sogyal as spiritual teacher. In my view, a Buddhist teacher who preaches love and compassion should also embody these qualities himself. Following my own feelings of confusion and anger, as well as the struggle of others, I took up the idea to interview several people who are involved in this difficult situation. How do they perceive the actions of Sogyal Rinpoche? How do they cope with the accusations? And to what extent do Sogyal's teachings remain valid? In this series, I want to re-evaluate my relationship with Buddhism and the Dharma. He's wearing the hat of a completely altruistic, I only do things for the benefit of others. And then going home and only doing things for his own amusement. Eight prominent students of Shogyo Rinpoche wrote a letter in July 2017 about his misconduct. Sanjay Navang was Buddhist monk and international director technique for Rigpa International. He was one of the writers of the letter. Can you describe the process uh, before this letter was, uh, was published? People were already very familiar with the extreme difficulty of communicating anything negative about Sogyal, either to him or his secretaries or management. So we were already realized that just by the, the way this had been going on for three, at least three decades, you know, some of the people in the past were bringing up, up sexual misconduct, you know, like one instructor had seven students come to him and and talk about sexual misconduct. And some of the people in, who wrote the letter knew that. So, and I knew that just writing individually was a pointless because I've already been doing it for years. So, Gyalakar, the Rikpa Sangha is in crisis. Long simmering issues with your behavior can no longer be ignored or denied. As long time committed and devoted students, we feel compelled to share our deep concern regarding your violent and abusive behavior. Eight people understood that that nothing can make a, a smallest dent on Sogyal's interest in change. So you'll have to do something very, very strong. So then this thing came out in, the, in Holland with Oan. And I saw that and it was like the last straw. It was just like... the. We can't just leave someone hanging out there as an individual. And that, that video has photos in it that exemplify the kind of cult environment of, of women all wearing the same kind of 90s in a kind of that connects with his group sex kind of thing and, and all this, this stuff. You, you could see it. It was that was the kind of thing that was like taking it for me from circumstantial evidence of me knowing only from looking on the outside and then other people's testimony online and then my friends who actually knew directly what happened. We don't have any goal other than to stop him because other people weren't able to stop him. So we, we did it in solidarity, I think. You also experienced uh, um, abusive uh, behavior yourself. So first of all, it's abuse because it crosses your boundaries without your permission. This one, I talked about it in this other interview. It's, he, he was really upset that his BBC shortwave radio wasn't working. And I'm trying to explain to him, you know, that's what these radios are like. Some days the sky reflects differently and it just doesn't work. And other... If you get on top of the hill, you'll get more angles that will work, and and I've done my best. But he 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 had brought it to Seth, and Seth could, I I was helping Seth. Seth had brought it, and he and it didn't it worked when I, we tested it, but then it didn't work. So he beat up Seth with this huge text, you know, literally this thick, you know, this these Petrus papers, but I, and has 
has wooden top and bottom on it, right? And he's just like repeatedly into Seth. So I said, it's not really Seth's fault. He brought to me and I couldn't make, you know, I, I couldn't get it to work. So Sogil just stopped and went, it's all very nice to say that. And then he just did it to me. He started hitting me. But I, I was, I was, you know, I was putting my arms up like a boxer getting all these blows. And um, I was shaking afterwards. We feel that we and others have been harmed because your actions were not compassionate. Rather, they demonstrated your lack of discipline and your own frustration. And I was, I was, I was kind of upset for a while, but at the same time, I was, I was almost like happy that I didn't, I didn't throw any punches of my own. I had self-control, and. I wasn't in any way ready to throw away my whole spiritual path with this teacher over the, over something like that. And you don't have any, you know, you know, it's an all or nothing situation. You either get out and give up everything that you've put in and leave then and there at the immediate, which is probably what I should have done. Or, you have to kind of mentally deal with it. And then you have all these people around you saying, oh, you're so lucky, you know, he doesn't give that kind of attention to other people. It means he's willing to be himself with you and all these things that sound nice, but they're nothing to do with this kind of violence. This occasion you remember uh, w very well because it was one of the first times. Yeah, it was the first time really of a big, something big. Well, this, this is uh, an example of uh, physical abuse, but um, there's also the emotional and psychological abuse. There's some very, very uh, strong examples, like like uh, people being critically ill, even traveling in India. I have, you know, Damcho told me about a time when she she was lying on a slab somewhere and... Sogyal just completely ignored that she was sick. She was like really critically sick. And he just went on doing all these normal things, ignoring her problem. When she came back, he said, oh, you know, he talked about how much it inconvenienced him because she was just acting sick to get time off. Um, so this, this kind of thing, actually accusing people of acting out, um, just to get attention, you know, what kind of person thinks that we deal with it by thinking that it's some kind of wisdom in, especially in the context of him being the wisdom provider, you know, if I even tried to speak, that was considered at many times, um, an inconvenience and, and instantly I was told to shut up and that I just wanted attention just for trying to speak about things like, just normal communication. On one hand, you have to communicate very well to work as a team. And I would have to just be saying, well, you know, we're transmitting on Skype, we're live. And then uh, the answer from him was, shut up, you just want attention, you know. And then later, if you didn't speak up, it was, why didn't you speak up and tell me we were, where we're live, you know. <laughs> so Your emotional and psychological abuse has been perhaps more damaging than the physical scars you have left on us. As a whole organization now, they're, they're accusing people of making it up to get attention in the media. So it's like, it's not just, it becomes, people are so used to it that they do it to each other and they do it to outsiders. So everything is just a constant process of denial and saying you're just acting, making it up to get attention. So there's this thing called narcissistic personality disorder. This label of uh, being a narcissist uh, fits to, to Sogya Rinpoche? He's a narcissist wearing the hat of an altruist, you know, the, op the very opposite of, of a narcissist. He's wearing the hat of a completely altruistic, I only do things for the benefit of others. And then going home and only doing things for his own amusement. But using altruism as a reason why everyone has to give him compassion, give him love, give him 
joy, those immeasurables are for him. Is it necessary to call him, uh, <coughs> to call Sogar Rinpoche a narcissist, or is it helpful for you to call him like that? It is, it's a key that people can use. They don't have to believe it, but they can use the, the idea to unlock a wealth of information about um, why they're in the, if they're experiencing um, trauma, they can find the source and they can find the, the, these ideas that have been put into their head by a narcissist that they're blaming themselves continually. They have to be able to see that it's it's all a strategy of someone else to turn you into their kind of the one that gives them compassion and love and everything when, when they're giving you back minimal. I, I'm, I've decided that I'm going to say it in public because it's a grand scale cult situation where not only, as I just pointed out, is it him behaving that way but all he's trained others to behave that way and he's and he's as a culture he's created a culture of denying people's experiences as if it's kind of identifying the ego they even have stickers the ego is not your amigo but which is a very big it's it goes against you know compassion for oneself and love for oneself in a healthy way it turns into a kind of a death struggle with your own personality, which causes you to do all kinds of strange things psychologically. Our heartfelt wish is that you seek guidance from the Dalai Lama, or the reputable Lamas of Good Heart, or anyone who can help to bring you back onto the true path of the Dharma. Oh, no.